Dear Joe Renono, I don't know if Clay still loves me. Maybe. Maybe I don't love him anymore. Really? I don't want to deal with this shit right now. What I need... I need you to do me a favor. Fuck. You have to be quiet, okay? You're going to scare the waves. Lydia, are you even looking at the ocean? You have to memorize the pattern so you don't even think about it. This is my wave, you just know. This is my wave. Don't yell at me. Just shut up, okay? I won't yell at you, I'm sorry. Do people pee in these? Yes. Gross. Totally gross. You can't think like that. It's like people have a little bit of the ocean inside of them and it comes out sometimes. Don't worry about it. That's stupid and gross. Want some gin? No drinking. This is like meditation. Maybe after. Dear Joe Renono, I am lost. I think my husband is going to leave me, and it pisses me off because I always thought that I would be the one that left him. Actually, I think he already left. I think I saw your boss's twin brother. Clay's twin brother is dead. Okay, whatever. Hey, that looks like fun. It is. You'd be good at it. You should come in later if you want a lesson. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Sure. Okay, whatever. I wish I could tell you more about it, but I don't fully understand what it is. And I also kind of don't give a shit. But I feel like I should try, you know? You seem like a good guy, Joe. You seem like your heart's in the right place. Please. Please. Please fucking help me. Sincerely, Helen. Your phone is turned off. Clay? 
I just talked to the Ulster County Sheriff. Viv died. She was attacked by a bear in her sleep. Her intern is missing. Hey, are you drunk? It is my day off, you know. It's 10 a.m. Yo. Look, we are not in your office right now at this exact moment. So I don't really give a shit if you're disappointed in me. Clay. No, I'm, so I'm sorry. I am sorry that your friend died. A bear? Jesus. Can you come to the office early tomorrow, before lunch? Yeah, yes, yeah. Are you gonna cancel the show? I don't know. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day off. Yeah, you too. Hey mom, I cannot drive out this year. I have to work, I'm sorry. I'm gonna mail your present, okay? And I'll put some pictures in there and some music that I think you'll like. Merry Christmas, call me back. Sufjan. I love this whole album, actually. It always gets me right into it. Okay. Now, give a little, little rest. Feel your tush on your knees. Everybody comfy? Got enough space between you and your neighbor? All right, now, before we head into the restorative phase of class, what I want to do is start with a good old-fashioned sun salutation. And I think you know how to do it. And lift your hands up. Deep breath. Forward bend, and reach down, back up, back down, plank. <laughs> Come down into a soft spot, take a deep breath, and into my, my favorite pose. Now be careful with your knees, you know, don't hurt yourself, you know you, as I say. All right, and lift up, <laughs> inhale. And exhale. <laughs> now I'm inhaling. Now I'm exhaling. Now I'm inhaling. Now I'm exhaling. Now I'm inhaling. Okay, Mama? Great. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Oh, how's that feel? Open? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's just get into a little circle together. Just a little quick round up. Mm. Warm each other up. Come on, don't be scared. We all know each other. All right. So, I want to know, what's everybody doing for their holiday break? Uh, well, I've got to take the LIR All right, all right, enough of that. <laughs> you know what I think? I think this room needs a big cup of hot cocoa. What do you say? All right, then, let's get our stuff together and we'll just go. You know, I don't, I don't like when the cocoa is too sweet. I haven't done it in a while. You know? <laughs> That's a really great modified corpse pose, Kim. <laughs> it, it's Kimberly. Kimberly. Anyone want to paint dicks on the cookies? swing my arms around and, and spit on the walls. Can you show me what that looks like? Once again, this is an art gallery, so there are going to be old people and art on the walls, and uh, no, you can't do any of that. Can I do this? My experience in Teach for America has fostered in me a general distrust of traditional systems of authority. <laughs> Roz, do you think that you could do your act sitting on a stool quietly? Roz, come on, come back. We can talk about this. Roz, you can do shadow puppetry. I've seen you do shadow puppetry. Roz, it's in a week. God damn it. audience. The Karen Davis family band of fruitcakes is proud to present a legend in his own mind, sure to lodge its way into yours, and he might just try to lodge it somewhere else, Joe Renono. <laughs> It's just 
just right. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Greetings, earthlings, Gentiles, and Jews. I come in peace. A joke and a truth and good evening. Tonight, it is my pleasure to welcome you to a world I am proud to call my own. Joe Renono's Yuletide Log and Other Fruit Cakes. In it, you will experience the wonders of song, reenactment, and comedy. Thank you for being my live studio audience. I hope you enjoy. I hope you know the love of another. <laughs> and most importantly, I hope you've saved room for log. <laughs> A poem entitled Cranberry Surprise. <laughs> Sauced is the only verb. Holiday hard, oozing sap of the cruel cut tree stains the Christmas skirt. Damaged goods when the stump seed disrespects the sanctity of polyester. <laughs> what is it, I ask? Another jovial mess for the dog to lap? Or will it seep and slip through a ripe and unassuming crack? What grows from such a release? A little spurt and a sigh of relief? By Jove, how the boards did creak. Under the pendulous, heaving weight of overladen boughs. A sticky, sticky fur. Too big, won't fit. Too crooked, unclean. In the season of Christ. The paunches like crowd grew mean. But one man said, But why talk of massive sap and gorged wood when another feast sits before me? <laughs> Thank you. By golly, he's right. It's always been the Christmas meal that has given me a throaty squeal. See the red of the viscous crayon, a tasty bit of muck, easy to get stuck. I lick and lick, tis never enough. What else? Mmm, juices of great meats, a sizable rump, a handful of sausage, dribbling gravy too hot to handle. When I have served you my stuffing, it won't hold a candle. Pants and shirts unbuttoned, we lay so sated, yet still with crimson-stained mouths, our breath was baited. Out comes the creamy, boozy nog, whiskey, mulled wine and brandy. But I was the dry stepping dandy. Oh, Sinterklaas, for the liquor I was, Randy. Instead, the morrow will bring a new day, not the insistent deep pound of old friend hangover. <laughs> Even darker horizons loom. Black Friday at Costco. A rom-com featuring Catherine Hagel. <laughs> yanking the wishbone sober. <laughs> Dear mother, make space on the couch. Or are you ashamed to call me son? <laughs> and that's a, a work in progress poem. 
about abstaining from the demon wench hoochie in the time of commemorating our deep psychic fear and the beauty of virgin birth. Why, look, children, who could it be? Allison, Helen, Maze brought a vaporizer and a six pack. Oh, I brought my vaporizer too. We're all getting high in the dressing room. Come on! TGIF! I'm ready to get fucked up. <laughs> children? You and Clay have a beautiful home. Thanks. I miss our shitty little apartment in the city, though. I think Clay was happier there. He's been so maudlin since we moved. He's like Carl Maudlin. Oh. So, you and Jasmine haven't been together for very long. No. I really like her, though. Well, I'm glad someone does. Fuck. <laughs> Jasmine! Hold on. Jasmine? Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Santa Claus. I have presents for you. Helen, this is for you. It's a carrot peeler. But I saw that you already have a very nice carrot peeler when I was in your kitchen earlier, so you can take that to Williams-Sonoma and exchange it for something that you don't have, like an ice cream scoop Maybe. or a pure... You, you can let people open the gift and be surprised. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Shall we start again? Okay, no? Uh, Jasmine? Elliot, I don't know you, and I wasn't expecting you. So you get nothing. Ho, ho, ho. This is for Dale. He picked it out himself. And for my brother. You can just tell me what it is. A Lego set. Thank you. Jasmine? Chef's gonna carve the turkey. It smells delicious. He'll be sad if you're not in there to tell him that. I'm sorry. I haven't figured out the answer yet. You don't have to work so hard. It's Christmas. Mom and Dad are on video chat. They look really old and sick. It might be their last Christmas. Actually, they may have died while I was just talking to you. It's okay. I love you. Go be with your sister. next to the graffiti. Pretty great luck, right? The show is already a big deal. Can you pardon me for a second? I, I have a headache. 
Hey, no disrespect. I saw her perform at PS1 last summer. Great show. I got laid at the after party. But shit, buddy. People are gonna think that you paid that bear to eat her. <laughs> I bet you got a honey pot stashed away somewhere. Maybe a marmalade sandwiches, a picnic basket. <laughs> Pretty small price to pay for uh, success, right? Ooh, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you look like shit. Then why are you taking my photograph? Morning! You sober today? No. God damn it, Razor! You were supposed to drive me. Hello, who the fuck are you? Uh, I'm helping Razor. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Do you want a job? Um, Do you want her job? Yeah. Reza, get out of my life. You're fired. Um, Helen. Helen. Hi. You take that from her, please. Just take it. All right, let's go. Helen? Yes? Road hypnotism is a phenomenon by which a person sinks into a state of automaticity while focused on a single moving point that comes to occupy the entire mind. I didn't know that. I didn't sleep well last night. I'm upset because my friend was killed in her sleep by a wild animal. That's awful. It would help me if you could talk with me a little bit while I'm driving. I can drive if you're worried about crashing. I wouldn't feel like much of a Marxist if I let my employee drive my car for me. I won't tell if you don't. I'm sorry I doubted you. I hope I can stand to be such a bourgeois asshole. For safety's sake. <laughs> oh! Ha! Huh? I wasn't expecting you. I asked her to come. I asked her to work for me again. She's gonna get Joe Bernono to be in my show. That's why she's here. She's going today. You asked her to work on Christmas? These are the sacrifices that we make for performance art. So what do you say? Do you want to work for me again? Um, yeah. Sober today? Yep. Great. I'll text you Joe Renono's phone number, and then you'll get his name on a contract, okay? I want to start promoting that tomorrow. Wait. Do you want to stay for dinner? Can't. No time. Sorry. Um, next year.
this job is okay. The boss lets me keep the TV on. I wear a tie to work. I'll read a book. I'll plan my performance art. Boozers in the seats, they sing me the blues. It's not my genre. Well, gives me time to snooze. Just a napping day. Is he the same? Who's to blame? Am I the same? And in December, I find some vomit that has froze. Scrub the tile. It is I, the angel of temptation. Where are your wings? I'm a metaphorical angel. I come in a blazer and boots for the snow. It is time for you to reckon, Joe Renono, for the sins of your years. But what have I done to deserve the rude slam of the shovel and bad dreams? You thought poetry and a licentious lifestyle would be enough. Then you crashed your bike and fell two months behind on your rent. Now you must be bored and sober, even as others make merry. No! Hi, I'm Karen Davis. How y'all doing? Please welcome to the stage the ghost of Joe Renono's Christmas present, Karen Davis! Hi, how's everybody doing tonight? It's my um, first studio appearance, and man, am I hungry. Hey, 
camera. How do you like these gowns? <laughs> Man, is it cold. Ugh. You ever heard the one about the... <laughs> hey, Macarena, I... <laughs> I love that one. But do you know what really bothers me? Jeez, <sighs> God. I could sure go for it. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Where everybody knows your name. Where's that fucking applause sign? <laughs> you know, I really thought that I would have more of a career by now. I thought I would have fallen in love. But the truth is, whenever I get close to it, close to love, I get a real icky feeling. The kind of ick no, I'm lying to you. Because I don't get close to love. I don't. I feel much closer to being alone. And I can sit for hours and hours and stare at things that don't have meaning and make meaning. And I don't know if I like that, but it fills the time. And... Um, being alive is really just about filling time. I'm right. I'm not going to ask you if I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you if I'm right. I'm right. I'm not going to ask you if I'm right. I'm right! Very good, Karen. <laughs> and that was a hit bit from Karen Davis's 2012 comedy special Without Me, I'm Something. <laughs> Karen, always a pleasure to have you with us. And the same for me, Joe, if I was capable of experiencing pleasure. Ah! <laughs> I was just considering dysfunction last night. Hey, myself. guys, I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah. Traffic was a nightmare. But look, I brought donuts in the Ooh. spirit of generosity. Mm. Oh, shit, I thought that was my cue. Mm. Cut. Slate. Take two. Ow. Action! <laughs> Hey guys, I brought donuts in the spirit of generosity. Ooh. Can I go back? Yes, go back. And this time when you do it, I want you to be sort of like, like breathless, you know? <gasps> What's motivating me, the traffic? And maybe you got your foot stuck in a train track? It's a nice day for a white wedding. Okay, that's not helpful. <laughs> okay, so say you're running across a wide open field and you're late, but you're always late and you see the theater across the track. But what you don't see is the train coming. And you can't hear anything except for the sound of your digital watch ticking and your, and your foot hits something iron and wood and you stub your toe and you get your boots stuck in the track. Oh, these are the boots the costume guy gave me. Your unreliable footwear gets stuck and that's when the train comes. Slate. Action! Hey guys, I brought donuts! Oh, you did it right here. I feel like this isn't a super complicated scene. Fuck you! Quiet on the set! I wasn't even supposed to play the donut girl. I was supposed to play someone in a position of authority. Cut! What's going on, Catherine? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Rye? Catherine Brooke, an avant-garde theater director, working <laughs> in the downtown idiom. Uh, I, 
I'm, I'm just not satisfied with the donut scene. I want passion. I want real feeling, combined with formal acuity. And I thought we were just making a Christmas special. <laughs> Carved from the imperfections of sweet humanity. But I suppose if we do as you have suggested in your direction of the neophyte, <laughs> they'll be getting a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I wearing an elf costume? And scene. <laughs> I fucking hate November, and Joe specifically told me I was going to get to play every goddamn ghost. What was that? I, I said I hate November. And why is that? Well, I don't know. It's soggy and ill-defined. Leaves go gray. I had a bad experience with a pilgrim at a Columbus mixer once. Well, then, why am I trying to say November? December? Huh. Well, I'd never thought of that. December. It's cold. People get angry, and you guarantee the song will be gone forever. But nothing takes this year's coming like a strong cup of December. Ah, December! Sounds good! Thanks, God! You're welcome, Carrie. <laughs> Babies and germs, a true esoteric. Now, please, make the sound of clapping. Welcome to the stage. The one person out here that Joe hasn't tried to sleep with, May Lyon! I don't need a technician. Just saying. <laughs> Putting the Jew back in Christmas. A poem by May Lyon, that's me. Behold, my fledgling memories of merry times with three Goyim girlfriends. <laughs> Any time my ex attempted those drippy decorations known as Xmas lights, I replied, fire hazards make me nervous. A man with face tattoos sold us our first Christmas tree in front of a Rite Aid my deepest plunge yet into a lover's cultural milieu. <laughs> I went to buy paper towels to get cash back and avoid ATM fees. She opened a dusty box of ornaments we you hauled from her dead grandmother's house. A sailor hat wobbled atop the tree. <laughs> the good smell in our living room challenged my roots seducing me like chocolate babka. <laughs> One December, a few years back, I took the tin foil menorah from the Hasid on Bedford Ave because I was feeling detached spiritually. He didn't have to ask, are you Jewish? We locked eyes. I flirt with Hasidic men for fun. <laughs> I tried once to turn this holiday Jewish, or my ex and I didn't have enough money to fly across the country, so we watched a gay film at the Quad instead. Someone gave me a hairy eyeball for talking loudly about how the Arthur Russell music didn't match the yuppie vibe. <laughs> Over Chinese food, we felt morose about the film's portrayal of addiction and a never-ending breakup. But oh, the Christmas gifts. There was the camping mat and sleeping bag, which my ex-ex's mother politely alluded to as a single size 
not the queen, just in case we break up, and we did. <laughs> this present was begrudgingly yielded after an unfortunate accident on the eve eve. In a firm yank, I broke the ranch house's electronic gate, not exactly having patience at my fingertips after escaping to a Starbucks in a strip mall to write in my journal. <laughs> ah, and then there was my Christmas in Tennessee with my XXX, G friend, whose family remarked how nice of me it was to come all the way there as a friend. It turned dark when we crossed the state line to the dad's house. Upon arrival in Alabama, we were told to sleep in separate rooms, which didn't stop us from giggling while making a Super 8 film of an owl figurine in a drawer of trinkets. He knew something <laughs> lezzy was going on, and we had to flee to the loving arms of my XXX's aunt, who was an artist and understood. <laughs> Just last year at Christmas, I argued gently over ham about the impact of Silicon Valley workers on rising rents in Oakland. I gave everyone a poem as a gift, but I had to censor the line, she likes sprouts because they're like pubes. <laughs> Poetry is a weapon against society. Did you know the Bryant Park holiday market opened in October this year? Isn't that disgusting? Our parks, save our parks from becoming malls for candles and lotion, save. Nay, lion, nay, come close. <laughs> Gather round, everyone come in. Don't be afraid of a body. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Settle and spread. Settle and spread. Normandy, you were right. Get this out of the way. I need my stool. I brought the cane. <sighs> what have we learned tonight, children? I think I learned that sometimes we receive rewards for doing things we don't want to do. Someone else. <laughs> I've learned that by modifying my dreams and expectations, I can move on to the next scene and eventually go home. Excellent! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I learned that my talents won't always be appropriately used in a group setting. Bravo. <laughs> there really is so much to be grateful for, isn't there? <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Presents! Presents! Even better, a letter! <laughs> My brother! Sal Renono. <laughs> The envelope reads my Christmas wish. <laughs> Dear Joe, my name is Helen. I am 31 years old and lately find myself rather lost in life. About three years ago, I married my college sweetheart, Clay. We've been together much longer, 
but decided to postpone our engagement until he finished his master's program in curatorial studies. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago, we both wanted to be artists. Clay had Orson Welles-sized ambitions of filmmaking glory, and I ran around with a feminist comedy improv troupe called No And. But we quickly saw... <laughs> the jokes come slow. <laughs> But we quickly saw that in order to have comfort and sustainability, we would have to be more pragmatic in our goal setting. Still, Clay has stuck far more closely to his original ambitions than I. And while I enjoy my work doing educational outreach through a botanical gardens program, I think he wants more. Worst of all, he has fallen in love with an art girl named Razor his former assistant. She is skinny, hip, and vulnerable. <laughs> Karen, my eyes grow weary in the lights of the theater. Please, read to me. <laughs> uh, anyway, this year Clay wants one thing for Christmas. You. He has a big art opening on New Year's Eve, and sadly, his headlining act was killed by a bear in a freakish accident outside her studio in upstate New York. Some years ago, Clay saw you perform at the Poetry Project. <laughs> New Year's Day Marathon at St. Mark's Church. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. We had an agreement that night. I forgot to pick up scallops in the city for our annual gathering of family and friends. The scallops were a traditional hors d'oeuvre we like to share every year, and their absence at our feast carried great symbolic weight for Clay. So he left me with our guests and took off to clear his head. But later that night when he came home from your reading, he described the joy that you brought so many people, young and old alike. He said you were the opposite of too cool for school, and that your performance would preempt a whole generational movement, destined to swing the cultural pendulum back in the direction of earnestness. <laughs> I'm writing you this letter in the hope that you can save my marriage. I'm writing you this letter because I don't want to forget the scallops again. Would you make my husband's dreams come true? Will you sacrifice your New Year's just this once to perform a durational poetry set in a Long Island City warehouse? <laughs> I would be forever indebted. Yours, Helen. <laughs> uh. It took a lot of courage to publicly air a marital trauma, Helen. But I don't think it's really me you're after. But it is. It's actually a really straightforward request. And I think there's money involved. Shh. <laughs> Most of life's gifts don't come in neatly wrapped packages. They don't come in hairy men wielding their sinewy prowess in front of tired microphones. <laughs> then where do they come from? I want you to think back your days of feminist rabble rousing. I want you to think back to no end. I want you to think of you. But I don't know if I know how. Hit it, Kim. Burley, Kim Burley. <laughs> this life is boring. Your husband's voice is out of tune. You get lonely. Eat a Newman O, watch some private cat videos. All the YouTube tabs, they bring you some laughs, but they're not loading fast enough. Call Verizon now, are they the ones to blame? We're not the same, who's to blame? What that shame? 
December you can take a break from misogyny Ask yourself, what about me? You may be poor, but you've got a bachelor's degree or two. Everybody! And in December you can take a break from misogyny. Ask yourself, what about me? these guys. Ladies and germs, we got one more act. Give it up for Helen. glad to be out of the house because it really stinks there. <laughs> Probably because I didn't clean it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so my life's real boring. I married the first guy that I met after undergrad <laughs> and uh, he up and opened a gallery and he left me home to uh, go on Gchat and shop on Amazon <laughs> and he wants blowjobs. <laughs> I said hey if you want BJ's, you should have stuck with that uh, bimbo you knocked up in your intro to semiotics class. Why don't you get her to do a structural analysis of your taint? <laughs> he says, Helen, we need to work on our intimacy. I said, oh yeah? I thought that's why we got Hulu Plus. <laughs> you ever notice? How husbands don't like to talk to you about anything except their problems at work. It's like I got all this extra estrogen pumping around and that makes me a prime candidate to be his HR person. <laughs> he put a, ring, put a ring on my finger. I thought I was getting some fun out of a gumball machine. <laughs> Turns out it was just a tiny handcuff for my soul. <laughs> that the worst four-letter word you could call a woman was cunt. Yeah. That's funny, because I always thought it was wife. Yeah. You guys are nice. You guys are nice. I like you guys. You guys like impressions? Huh? Here's an impression of my mother-in-law. My impression is that she's a real nice lady who had three unwanted pregnancies, I married one of them, and now we're all paying for it. <laughs> and she hates my casseroles. You guys have been great, really great crowd. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Let's bring Joe back up here, huh? <laughs> Can 
Joseph, come along. <laughs> oh, Joseph, where will we rest for the night? I am weary and heavy with spawn. <laughs> Mary, I've saved up all of my Marriott points for just such an occasion. But there is no Marriott in sight. Only a very tall angel dressed in a shimmering moo moo, imbibing a Bud Light flavored with lime. Ready? Ready? Yeah. 